Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillahirobbilalamin. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi Senang sekali berjumpa di channel Donditan dan juga uh, siaran ini berlangsung bersama-sama dengan YouTube channel uh, milik Dr. Sabil Ahmed di Chicago, Amerika Serikat. Masya Allah senang sekali. Saya nanti akan berbincang-bincang dengan Dr. Sabil Ahmad. Saya adalah salah satu fans daripada Dr. Sabil Ahmad ya. Masya Allah. Uh, segera saya akan tampilkan Dr. Sabil Ahmad Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Dr. Sabil Ahmad, how are you? Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh To you and to all the listeners Masya Allah I'm very excited uh, Dr. Sabil That I can talk with you through online uh, Actually I want to meet you in person Maybe someday I would like to invite you To come to Indonesia and to give uh, dakwah in Indonesia What do you say? Dokter, you know, looking forward, masya Allah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, okay, so you know in Indonesia we have a lot of your fans. I'm the one of your big fans, Dokter Sabil. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, to start our talk show, uh, can you please uh, tell us a bit about your journey from a medical doctor then now become a a very popular da'i in USA, Doctor. Yes, uh, Brother Jonathan. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina ma'bad. You know, my journey was uh, quite uh, un-unique, I would say, and many da'is, they can connect with that journey. And here is how it happened. So I was born and raised in India, Hyderabad, not uh, too far from Indonesia, right? <laughs> I see, I see. So I moved with my parents uh, when I was around 14 years of age. And I was just like an ordinary child going to public school here, you know, playing video games and, uh, you know, being in the room, not always with the parents, but I was still a good boy, alhamdulillah. I see, alhamdulillah. My parents, they always used to bring uh, these uh, videos and they used to watch the videos, Islamic videos. So, Alhamdulillah, they are quite religious and they're quite pious. May Allah bless them. Mm -hmm. So, one day they brought this video and they said, you know, Sabil, this video in the lecture and the person in the lecture is so important. We want you to come out, you know, uh, take a break from your homework and come out and watch this video with us in the living room. I said, yes, you know, being parents is important. So, I came out and then I watched the video. That was approximately one hour video. Uh-huh. That one hour that one hour changed my life. That one hour changed my life. Now mm -hmm. I felt, you know what? Islam is not just something which is uh what do you call it, uh you take for granted because you're born into a Muslim family. Islam mm -hmm. is not just about blind belief. Islam has mm -hmm. evidence to it. Islam is mm -hmm. the only truth. The person in the video with confidence, with eloquency, with evidence, he was uh, sharing Islam answering the questions, I felt, you know what, I want to be like him. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're thinking, okay, Brother Sabil, okay, what's the suspense? Tell us, who is that person in the video? You can take a guess. Who do you think it may be? I guess it is uh, the Bilet Sheikh Ahmed Dida. You got it, mashallah. Mashallah. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. That's, that was mashallah. Him. The, the yes, title yes, of yes. the video was uh, Islam and Christianity, a symposium. And that mm -hmm. was uh, Sheikh Ahmad Didat on the stage. Along mm -hmm. with him was uh, Brother Gary Miller. Yes. Gary uh -huh. Miller was a person who is a revert to Islam just like yourself. And, uh -huh. um, you know, he was a Christian pastor, Christian priest. So it was uh -huh. a symposium in South Africa. And they were mm -hmm. uh, giving a lecture and they were responding to the questions from South Africans. Mm hmm that maybe felt, you know what, I want to do like this, that created that passion, that burning fire in my heart, and then the rest is history. Mashallah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, uh, I'm sorry to uh, to interrupt. Actually, I was reported in 2014 also because I watched the videos of the late uh, Sheikh Hamedidat, Dr. Sabir. After him, then I watched all the videos of Dr. Zakir Naik, Sheikh Yusuf Estes, and so on and so on. MashaAllah, now I become Muslim. MashaAllah. Ah, yeah. So one, so then your question could be, okay, fine, what about the medical field? 
what is mm. the connection with that okay and then why did you leave it yes okay. so again if there are youth listening over here parents listening an important lesson especially for the youth mm -hmm. you have a passion to do something but if your parents if they want you to do something else you mm -hmm. your parents there is a blessing in it there is a reward in it mm -hmm. so my parents they wanted to me to go into a pre medical field and then do the medicine i, I said no, dawa is important i want to do dawa i want to be like ahmad dash ahmad dada rahim allah but uh -huh. listening to parents you know overseas supersedes my passion yeah, yeah. my desires my needs so mm -hmm. then i went to medical school then i graduated from medical school and then i was uh, you know shadowing some doctors mm -hmm. but then happened uh, you know 911 and some other islamophobic many incidents in us yes at yes. that point i have to decide you know what i obeyed my parents i became a doctor and mm -hmm. uh, now there is a need in the us around the world for muslims to step up and mm -hmm. to share the message and to dispel the misconceptions so after mm -hmm. consulting with the parents with my family and with my you know close friends doing istikhara praying to allah that's how i made the move to take a break mm -hmm. from the medical field and become a mm -hmm. full time dai mm -hmm. mashallah so basically you got your medical doctor degrees because of your parents but your passion is to do the dawah right Alhamdulillah, yes. If yes. I'm not mistaken, if I'm not mistaken, I got, I read somewhere that uh, you met uh, Sheikh Ahmed in that person, in person? I did, yes, yes. Um, I met in, uh, US Sheikh, or in Europe? Not only I met him, I studied under him. MashaAllah. I, How many years, doctor? Many few dais could say that, right? Yes. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> The one or two people that I can remember who can say this would be Dr. Zakir and I can say it. And maybe Brother Shabir Ali, I'm not sure if he can say that. But I mm -hmm. had the privilege not only to meet him, but to study with him. So let me see if I have a IREF. So I, I used to study when he used to come from South Africa. My teacher mm -hmm. in Chicago, Dr. Amir Ali, he used to uh, have, what do you call it, uh, his sessions, mm -hmm. Adidas sessions. And I used mm -hmm. to go to those sessions and uh, shadow Sheikh Ahmad Didad and mm -hmm. uh, to open his uh, Bible, uh, the Quran. It was a red letter. And he used mm -hmm. to say that, you know what, this is how uh, you should respond to this question. These are the verses. And here is that picture. MashaAllah, you were very, very young. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> MashaAllah, what year is that, doctor? This was uh, mid 90s. I see. Yes. MashaAllah. So that's the Bible. That's his famous Bible. You know, when you see him uh, on the stage, like yes. with uh, Jimmy Swaggart and other people. Yes, yes, that's yes, yes. That's his famous Bible, by the way. Yes, yes. I watched that debate many, many times. <laughs> that's all. Yes, yeah, so, Alhamdulillah. So, that's how the passion came about that's how my medical studies and that's how the need of the day one time a scholar came to my home to meet my parents and my family his name is uh sheikh yusuf islahi from india oh the big yusuf scholar. Islam. yeah yusuf islahi he passed away may allah bless his soul so he was having oh. dinner with us and he asked me the question you know sabil you know mm. you left your medical field and you became a full-time islamic worker islamic activist mm why mm -hmm. i mentioned to him you know with all due respect sheikh there are 700000 full time doctors in usa mm -hmm. 700000 and there are only handful of uh, full time dais uh, and the need is here more yes. i would be just like a 700000 and one doctor right what yes do, yes yes, yes. I have in the society i may have more impact over here becoming I... a full time dai and I know that, you know, I have one life to live. We all have one life to live. We have to do the most and give the most. You know, I don't want to regret on my deathbed that why mm -hmm. didn't I do more when there was a need. I don't want mm -hmm. to regret, especially on the day of judgment, that, you know, Sabir, you could have done that. You could have supported uh, the Muslim Ummah better with the blessings, the abilities Allah has given to you. Mm -hmm. All of those were running in my mind. And then my teachers also motivated me to become a full-time. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept it from all of us. 
Masya Allah, Doctor. So I saw your videos also, and I can see I can say that you spread the Islam in USA in a very beautiful way, Doctor. Uh, can you tell us uh, your challenges in doing so? Challenges in the USA, there are many, I would say. You know, one challenge uh, would be from the Muslims themselves, mm. I would say. Because Muslims, uh, unfortunately, they are they don't realize the importance of sharing Islam because many of the Muslims are born and raised in the Muslim family with the Muslim culture and uh, sometimes uh, Islam is made it into as a ritualistic way. But Islam is a dynamic faith. Islam came to transform the society peacefully, bring justice, bring unity, bring morality, right? Uh, mm -hmm. So that transformative effect, many times the parents they don't share with their children and the khatim mm -hmm. from the Juma they don't share with the people that Islam mm -hmm. is a way of life. Uh, our mm -hmm. obligation is to uh, connect uh, the creation with the creator and to peacefully transform the society and, uh, you know, with Allah's guidance, do away with uh, the problems, provide mm -hmm. some peace. So that dynamic nature of Islam, many Muslims are not aware of it. For that reason, mm -hmm. either they don't do Dawa or they don't support Dawa or both. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I have made this, uh, you know, approximate calculation that all the money that Muslims donate in the USA majority they go to relief organizations and the rest they may go to building the masajids less than two oh. percent they go towards uh, dawa all right oh. and then we say you know what how come there is Islamophobia in the world how come people have misconceptions it is because we are not doing our job fully mm -hmm. not investing our resources Mm -hmm. So the first challenge would be from the Muslims to remind them and to wake them up and to make them, you know, I'm not saying that every single person have to leave their jobs and become a full time Dai. But mm -hmm. if you are living in a country in which predominantly there are non-Muslims around you and Muslims are only one or two percent, that means mm -hmm. we have to give more. We have to do more. Everyone has some ability, you know, just give two hours a week, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for those Muslims who are listening, just a reminder to you and me, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Surah Baqarah, Surah number 2, Ayah number 143. Mm -hmm. And the verse continues. And the translation mm -hmm. is this, Brother Dantan, that... Yes. Uh, Allah is speaking to the Muslims and he's saying that you are an ummah, justly balanced, a moderate ummah, that you become witnesses to humanity the way the messenger of Allah was a witness over you. The messenger of Allah, right, Prophet Muhammad yeah. wasalam, in his lifetime, his main mission was to invite yeah. humanity to the worship of one God. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. No more with us, no new prophet is to come. So that responsibility of conveying the message is now the responsibility of the Muslim Ummah. Mm -hmm. For that reason, you know, when uh, the companions of the Prophet, peace be upon him, when they read the Quran, they realized that, you know what, yes, they have to pray, they have to give charity, the zakat, they have to, mm -hmm. you know, do the fasting in Ramadan and do the Hajj and obligations, but they also realized that Islam is not only for Makkah and Medina, Islam is not mm -hmm. a local faith, Islam is mm -hmm. a faith for humanity. Yes. So for that reason, they went out expedition after expedition from Makkah, Medina, Arabia, uh, mm -hmm. six, in the year 640, Amr bin al-As, who he went to the people mm -hmm. of Egypt to open the doors of Islam in there. In the year 648, uh, Saad bin Abi Waqas, he went to the people of China to convey the message. 661, mm -hmm. Uqba bin Nafi, he went to the people of, uh, you know, Algeria. Then expeditions mm -hmm. came to Indonesia, Malaysia, subcontinent, yes. India, Russia, Central Africa, Europe, right? Correct. So say that Muslims have to realize the importance. Islam is a global faith. And mm -hmm. uh, maybe our non-Muslims may hold us responsible that why didn't we convey the message to them? Mm -hmm. Right? I mean, I always say from a Juma Khutbah, Brother Dhanitan is that, uh, you know, Angels are not going to come and knock at the doors of the non-Muslim home saying that, you know, this is the Quran for you. Islam is mm -hmm. for you. Here is a solution for your mm -hmm. you know, problems. 
Christians and Jews and Hindus are not going to do that. Muslims are given that responsibility and Muslims are given that uh, honor. It's an honor mm -hmm. by the way. And Muslims are given that reward, inshallah, if you fulfill that honor. And then quickly, the second important, uh, you know, challenge that we face is that you know because of the media the media is biased as we know that right the fox news the cnn the nbc other media channels uh, sometimes mm -hmm. if a muslim does something wrong they, they do like a wall to wall coverage 24 hour, hour coverage putting islam they blame islam for it and they take all the connection okay which muslim organization which charity mm -hmm. they are attached with so they blame islam for the actions of the muslims Mm -hmm. so I would say these are the two big challenges that Muslims uh, are facing, but then obviously their solution to these challenges. Mm -hmm. MashaAllah. Doctor, I'm actually quite cu uh, curious. Where is the idea to do the open house masjid coming from? Is that from you? <laughs> um, you know, there used to be masjid open houses but alhamdulillah our organization we kind of perfected it to some sense ah. yeah and the reason we are doing uh you know brother donathan and all the viewers if i have to label like the top 50 dawa projects right in fact mm -hmm. i wrote a book the top 50 dawa projects mm -hmm. it's on amazon so i have that book if i have, if you ask me the question okay dr sabil of all the 50 dawa projects which one is the most effective that you want to invest the most resources one mm. project comes to my mind right away and mm. that be the masjid open houses the mosque open houses yeah where is that idea coming from doctor well the idea is that uh, you know according to the according to the pew research survey mm -hmm. uh, 67 percent of the non-muslims they have never met a muslim i see the USA i'm saying because i'm from the us and according to the pew research again if a non-Muslim has, has not met a Muslim, their misconceptions about Muslims or Islam is about 86%. But if they have met a Muslim, that uh, fear of the unknown about Islam goes down to 36%. I see. Look at the big change in 50 point drop, right? Yes, so that yes. We need yes. to be out in the society, meet our neighbors, meet our non-Muslim brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. Also, there is a Pew survey that says, that 37% of uh, the non-Muslims in the USA, they want to mm. learn about Islam. I see. Right? So oh, the US has a population of about uh, 350 million. So if you do mm. the math, 37% of the non-Muslims, that translates into close to 130 million non-Muslims. They sincerely, they want to learn Islam. You know, they don't want to like blindly believe in Fox yeah, media, yeah, yeah. media. And how would they learn about Islam? We yeah, open, yeah, yeah. open our hearts, our uh, you know, our masjids. They can come mm -hmm. in. They can meet with us. They can shake hands with us. You know, smile together, eat together, social activities mm -hmm. together. We create that environment. Within that mm -hmm. environment, then we give a short presentation about Islam. Mm -hmm. and give them okay. opportunity to ask questions and give them the gifts. Now they become uh, receptive. Mm -hmm. So that's the idea behind the open houses. And now we are doing it, you know, Alhamdulillah, so many all over the US and Canada. And now we mm -hmm. want to export it like all over South America, Europe, and inshallah. They also started that in my hometown of India, by the way. I heard, you know, many good news regarding that. I see. Wonderful. Yeah, actually, we, I, especially me, I, I quite jealous with your activity in, in your hometown with the open house mosque. It's very, it's very nice yeah, to get interacted with the uh, non-Muslims and also get the reaction with them when we tell us about when we tell them about the Bible, their Bible, right? And uh, but uh, is there any people who disturb that uh, open mosque, uh, op open house mosque, uh, doctor? Sure, sure. So, mashallah, we have done like literally hundreds of them, if not thousands. So you know, um, we prepare ourselves mentally mm. and physically for you know mm. that one person maybe less than one percent of the people who may mm. who may come to threaten us either physically or mm. verbally so almost every open house that we do you know we have to be wise you know the environment mm. that we live in we have lots of security mm. we have lots of security we hire we invest you know we pay for it we have to unfortunately that's uh, you know 
first we have to be wisely and protect ourselves I so see. That's I... the physical part of it but verbally some christians and some maybe some hindus maybe less than one percent they come uh, to the mosque open houses to debate with me i see yeah 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 i also some of your videos do debate with some priests also right and their uh, and their way to debate with you is quite it's quite harsh eh, doctor you know, uh, in the in the mosque open, so the ones that you have seen about the priest coming and others, there's not a mosque open house by the way. There's just oh, an individual priest coming and they want to sit down in my office or with some people and then mm -hmm. have that session, right? Mm -hmm. But in the mm -hmm. mosque open houses, if you like 50 people, 500 people sitting, I don't debate mm -hmm. with them. If they if they disagree, I will reply to their disagreement in a nice, polite way. But then I say, you know what? This is not a debate session. This is just to inform all the attendees, the wonderful brothers, sisters who came here mm -hmm. about what Islam is and what Islam is not. If you still mm -hmm. want to engage with me with the topic that you disagree with what I say, have said, outside of the presentation, I will stay here, inshallah. And then we can mm -hmm. have a conversation over a cup of tea, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, per the people that you may have seen, uh, Brother Donathan, that I have, you know, quote unquote, debated. I would say it's a dialogue from my side, debate from their side. Any time doesn't matter, right? And this is a prophetic sunnah mm -hmm. that our approach should be with uh, with compassion, with empathy, yeah. right? With, with, a with, man, with a smile on the face to win their mm -hmm. hearts, not to defeat yeah. them. You know, it's easy to defeat a person and then we can mm -hmm. distance a person. No, our purpose is to win the person's heart so he can come to mm -hmm. our side, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's a prophetic sunnah, by the way. And, and yes, there, yeah. uh, there is a verse in the Quran, just to remind, because you know, Quran is the best uh, you know tool that Allah has given for us. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Guidance. So there is a there is a there is an ayah in the Quran, Surah 16, chapter 16, mm -hmm. Surah Nahal, mm -hmm. verse number 125. Yes. In which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And the verse continues. Yes, yes, yes. Translation. The, more, the most important is the word Asan. Eh? Yes. Invite all to the way of Allah with wisdom and good yes. interaction. And converse yes. with them in ways which are best and most gracious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, this is an advice again for the youth who are watching this. Mm. Our frame of reference should not be our emotions, should not be their emotions. It should yes. not be the attitude, okay, let's defeat them. It should not mm -hmm. be the environment. Our frame of reference it should be the Prophet mm -hmm. How he used to conduct, even with the Islamophobes of his time, with kindness, mm -hmm. right? With, uh, with trying to win their hearts, mm -hmm. with wisdom. So that's quite mm -hmm. important because sometimes, you know, when we watch some videos about some people striding on the streets, debating with the people, um, debate is not the default way of conveying the message. Mm -hmm. MashaAllah, Doctor. Uh, Doctor Sabil, is there many churches in USA uh, become masjid? <laughs> You know, you'll be surprised to find out. Uh, well, you should not be surprised. You may have heard this many, many times. Yeah. Islam yes, yes, yes. pastors growing faith in the USA. And Christianity, mm. you know, for whatever all of the reasons that we know, is declining mm. really, really fast. Yeah. So yes. they're not able to sustain their churches. You know, who's going to pay the rent? Only five people come to the, you know, Sunday service, for example. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So many churches are closing down. Islam is spiking up. Islam mm -hmm. is spiking up, you know, prophecy fulfilled. Every home mm -hmm. is going to be, you know, Muslim in there, inshallah. Mm -hmm. So those empty churches, Muslims are purchasing it. And now wow. they're moving into a masajis. La ilaha illallah is the one that we are proclaiming from there. And uh, yeah. alhamdulillah, we are also doing dawah using the same uh, places that used to be places of shirk. Now they are mm -hmm. places of tawheed. Mm -hmm. One of my subscriber, doctor, also stay, uh, live in USA. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was very proud to show me the video. This masjid yeah, was a church before, and they have a very good uh, activity with the Muslims around there. Mashallah. So, how many about how many churches become masjid in USA, doctor? Hundred, two hundred? Oh, 
most likely I would say it would be close to a thousand. They are close to 3,000 plus uh, massages in USA and growing. Mashallah, 3,000? 75% of the massages in the uh -huh. USA, they were built in the last 25 years. Mashallah. Get it? The big spike, right? It's going like this. Yeah. Spike. Yes, 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 and yes. Obviously, you know, the churches are like uh, places where uh, they're already built to accommodate. Mm. And they have the zoning laws already figured out, non-for-profit, mm. uh, you know, status. So all of that is just like you move in and you start worshiping, right? You just take out wow. the cross and all of that, you move in. It's like plug and play. Yes, 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 yes. yes so yes. for that reason, it is easy to purchase the church and make it into a masjid and mm -hmm. uh, you know immediately start our activities there. So for that reason, they are like really, uh, you know, uh, lucrative for the masjid. Wow. Yes. So how many masjid now do you have, doctor? Uh, so what we do is uh, the organization which I'm a director of, which is Gain Peace. We are mm -hmm. part of Islamic Circle of North America. So our mm -hmm. our uh, mission is this: we don't have like one masjid that that's the only place that we go and do the dawah and invite people. We provide dawah services to all the masajis in the USA and Canada. Oh, I see. Speaker oh. services, planning of open house, marketing of open house. Uh, how to set up, you know, how to make, how to have all the posters in there, banners up there, activities in there, you know, making the teams in there. We provide mm -hmm. those dawah services to massages around USA. MashaAllah. Uh, doctor, can you tell me roughly how many uh, people reported to Islam in USA in a year? Uh, what was the last sentence, sorry? I mean, roughly how many person converted to Islam in USA in a year? Okay, Alhamdulillah. So according to the estimate in the calculation that our team did, uh, anywhere from 20,000 to 25,000 each year, our non-Muslim brothers and sisters, after seeing the beautiful faith of Islam and its guidance of their mm -hmm. own choice, they recite La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Yeah. But the, but the amazing thing is this, Brother Donathan, it is 60% of them, they are women. I see. Yes. I see. And uh, you mean all uh, all women or young women? Uh, majority are younger women. Younger women, alhamdulillah. Yes, they would say from uh, ages 18 to maybe 29 in that age range. Majority uh -huh. of them are in that age range. I see. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. College going um, or just out of college, right? And more yeah. people are converting to Islam now because of the atrocities going on in Palestine. Yes. May Allah protect our brothers and sisters in Palestine all over the world and all the innocent people around the world. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. So, you know, yeah. when people sometimes they ask me, Brother Donathan, that have mm -hmm. you seen a spike in the number of conversions in the last 25 years? I would say there have been four spikes. Four spikes because of that uh, WTC. First spike, first spike was right after nine one one. Yes, WTC. Yeah, the second spike when President Obama when he became the president. I see. The third spike was uh, when Trump became president. <laughs> How come? <laughs> oh, because he. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. That yeah. inshallah, the fourth spike we are seeing it right now. Yes, correct. Because of the Palestine. Because as a Palestine, you know, we just shipped out like 3,000 more packages about yes, Quran, yes. about the Book of Sira all over the USA. Mm -hmm. uh, because more people are requesting, you know, people are looking at the resilience and uh, the strongness of faith and the mm -hmm. contentment and, you know, reliance of, of uh, on Allah despite mm -hmm. all these, you know, atrocities that they face. Non-Muslims mm -hmm. are thinking, you know what, who are these people? You know, they are so beautiful. They are so strong mm -hmm. despite what's going on. So they, they're becoming curious. So mm -hmm. more people are uh, reading the Quran, alhamdulillah. But Allah's mm -hmm. guidance, more people are converting to Islam. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Sabir, let me tell, let me tell you about uh, my activity and our foundation. I joined also uh, uh, one foundation that take, taking care of the reverters, yeah. I joined this foundation in 2020, and uh, we, we do some activities 
maybe like you, but we cannot do the open house mosque, yeah, because in Indonesia maybe that activity is uh, is not how to say it's not conduct it's not very safe maybe yeah. So but I'm uh, I I'm heading uh, one division. It's uh, research and development. So the foundation asked me to debate with uh, the Christian priest, the Christian priest, at least two times in a year, hmm. and also we also taking care of the reporters in uh, surrounding Jakarta and maybe in the West Java or middle of Java, and we have the branches in in all the in Indonesian provinces, and uh, we we bought one church doctor. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we bought one church in the center of Java, and we converted into a mosque. And we named this uh, church become Mosque Isa Al Masi. Alhamdulillah. You know, a friend of mine, brother Eddie, he also uh -huh. purchased a church, and he named the named the, the new masjid as uh -huh. uh, Jesus Islamic Center, something like that. Okay. <laughs> House of Tauhi, yes. Jesus Islamic yes. Center. Yes, yes, and we also uh, we also doing dakwah through uh, media sosial like this uh, YouTube or TikTok or yeah Instagram. So Alhamdulillah, uh, for the last few months, we have so many visitors come to our studio. We discuss about the Bible. We discuss about the Quran. Some of them, some of them didn't take the shahada. Some, most of them took the shahada here. Nashallah. Almost, almost every day, yeah. I I received the, some of the Christians uh, from the Christians and from the Catholics. Alhamdulillah. But I I don't think I can do this open house mosque. Actually, I want I want to do this because it looks very nice, yeah, to interact with them in the very nice condition, uh, having food together and uh, having nice uh, dialogue with them, yeah. But I don't think in Indonesia we can. Actually, in what Indonesia we are the biggest Muslim population country in the world. Uh, Dr. Hmm. Sabir. How many people of other faiths? Like how many Christians are there in Indonesia? Roughly, uh, almost 30 million, uh, doctor. So that's a big number, right? Uh, so yeah. you are saying you cannot do the open house because there are legal restrictions or because it takes too much effort? Uh, no, because maybe I think because of the regulation, doctor. Well, look into it. Look into it, right? Uh, mm -hmm. If they're able to do it, that's good. The second option mm -hmm. would be that, you know, sometimes uh, because of the zoning laws, the masjid is small in the USA. What we do is we rent mm -hmm. out some banquet hall in some hotel or somewhere and we do an mm -hmm. open house also in there. Exactly the same things as we do in the masjid. So if I that see. is possible, so I think, you know, that would be a second good option for you. Mm -hmm. I think the condition is the other way around, uh, Dr. Sabil. Maybe because in USA, the Christian is the majority, uh, Islam is the minority. In Indonesia, we have the Islam is the majority and the Christian is the minority. So that's why the Christianity in Indonesia, uh, from the last decades, they have been very, very aggressive to convert Muslim into their religion. Mm -hmm. So. This is also we are doing now that we are giving the lectures. We are giving the how to say. I also uh, give the lecture in one of the uh, university, Islamic university, especially only for this Christology. So we are we are aiming to to guard the the faith of uh, Muslim people in Indonesia from the uh, missionaries, something like that, uh, doctor. No, that's really important. Uh, we need to also protect our youth so they don't yeah. get, uh, you know, taken away by the missionaries. So having lectures about why Islam is true, why there is mm. an evidence for the existence of Allah, how Islam compared to Trinity, the Islamic concept of God is the right concept preached by mm. all the prophets. Uh, so we need to have like really solid lectures on that topic. Lectures mm. about uh, why the Quran is the miracle from Allah. We need to make... Yeah. Strong, we need to make faith strong among the youth. How mm -hmm. can we prove that Prophet Muhammad is the prophet and the last prophet of Allah, right? And right. the Islamic guidance uh, about the solutions to humanity's problems. 
What I'm saying right. is that as much as we want to work on the non-Muslims and new Muslims, we also mm -hmm. need to protect and make the faith strong of our own Muslim youth. So yes. that's equally important. So maybe one day we can collaborate and uh, we can discuss some topics of, uh, you know, sharing uh, or making the youth strong in our faith. We can discuss yes. some of the uh, steps that we can take to keep up a new Muslim strong in Islam and make them uh, active in Islam. We can also discuss some theological topics about, okay, you know what, the Christian missionaries, they say this about Trinity mm -hmm. and they say this about the Quranic verses. How do we respond to them? So some kind of a online Dawah training in a, mm -hmm. what do you call it, in a live stream session. All those yes. things are possible, inshallah. Yes, inshallah, inshallah. I'm very excited to do that, uh, Dr. Sabir. Uh, because we are now uh, welcoming the Ramadan, yeah, the fasting month. Uh, next week is a uh, Ramadan, so we will have many activities. I hope after the Ramadan we can do that, uh, Doctor Sabir. Inshallah. Yeah, of course, of course, and uh, pray for me. May Allah accept the Ramadan, and especially in this Ramadan. You know, Ramadan is not just about our activities, just within the Muslims. Yes. The Muslims used to be really active in Ramadan. Especially mm -hmm. when it comes to dawah, when it comes to helping the bigger community, when it comes to educating the bigger community. So many mm -hmm. of the expeditions that happen in the past, they happen in the month of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Salahuddin Ayubi is? Yes. Yes? That yes. battle of Hittin, it happened in the month of Ramadan, by the way. Correct. Correct. Battle of Badr yes. happened in the month of Ramadan. Yes. So many, many such uh, important events in Islamic history. So my message to the Muslims is try to be active in the month of Ramadan. Ramadan is not just a month about uh, only self-purification. It is also mm -hmm. the purification of the society around you. Yes, mashallah. Yeah, uh, Dr. Sabir, uh, actually I want to discuss one thing. This is uh, also very important for the Muslima, for the Muslim women in Indonesia. Because you know, we as the biggest Muslim population country in the world, our Muslim uh, our Muslim women also, uh, we have a very big uh, numbers in Indonesia. But the problem is, uh, still many uh, Muslim women in Indonesia still not wearing hijab. Uh, this is, I believe, also the issue in USA that uh, non-Muslims, accused that uh, Mus uh, Islam is uh, oppressing the women because to, to wear the hijab, something like that. I believe you also already discussed this issue a lot with uh, your colleagues in USA. Can you please give us some advice about this, uh, Dr. Sabir? There could be a few reasons why our sisters may not be wearing hijab. Right? You know, we don't want to just put the sisters uh, in the corner. You know, many a times we Muslim men, we don't abide by Islamic rules and regulations, what Allah wants. So we all have shortcomings, not only the sisters, only also the brothers. Okay, so let me yeah. just make that straight. Now, when it comes to hijab, you know, one time I went to Iowa to give a lecture about Sharia. There were many people in there and there were also many Muslims. It, it was a mixed gathering. Mm. So one of the questions that came to me was, you know, Dr. Sabil, you are saying that, so a Muslim lady asked me that question. Mm. Dr. Sabil, you said in your lecture that hijab is an obligation for the Muslim women. Mm. I have read the Quran she's saying, I have not seen that, you know, hijab is an obligation. Can you show that to me? Mm -hmm. What I mentioned to her was that there are two, there are two passages in the Quran. One is chapter 24, Surah Nur, ayah number yeah. 31. And the second one is Surah Ahzab, Surah 33, Chapter 33, Ayah number 59. That mm -hmm. obligates Muslim women to properly cover themselves. Mm -hmm. But then she started to argue, okay, you know what? It doesn't clearly say that. But then I said to her, you know what? When that Ayah was revealed in the time of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his understanding and the understanding of the Muslim women around is that as soon as they heard that passage of the Quran, Mm -hmm. they started to properly cover themselves. It was mm -hmm. their understanding. So don't take my opinion, my fatwa against your understanding. Let's go mm -hmm. back to the Prophet and to the first generation. What was mm -hmm. their reaction when they heard these passages from the Quran? Mm -hmm. So one reason some of the sisters in Indonesia around the world, maybe they're not wearing the hijab, they may be thinking it's not an obligation, but it mm -hmm. is an obligation. Mm -hmm. 
based on these two ayahs and the interpretation and the understanding of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Sometimes, sometimes some people may not wear the hijab, some sisters, because you know they may have influenced by their other Muslim sisters who are not wearing the hijab or just mm -hmm. by the general culture. It is mm -hmm. important for us to know, you know, my dear sisters, mm -hmm. our frame of reference should be the Quran and the authentic Sunnah of Prophet yes. Muhammad, peace be upon him. Yes. You know, ultimately we have to please the Creator. Mm -hmm. We have to please okay. the Creator and He will give us the reward, inshallah. So in that respect, sometimes we have to sacrifice our own desires. Sometimes we have to let go of some toxic toxic relationships that are compromising our Islam. So mm -hmm. be strong. Allah honored you with hijab, with the modesty, you know, for both sisters and brothers. Hijab is a flag of honor, I would say. So be mm -hmm. proud of it. Convey that to the non-Muslims. And uh, inshallah, there is a reward in there. And there's an honor that Allah has given to you. Mashallah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, uh, Dr. Sabir. So, uh, another question about the global Islam in the world, Dr. Sabir. What do you think is the challenges for Islam in the world as a global, Dr. Uh, globally, I would say there would be about three challenges. Uh, one challenge can be our aqida, our uh, you know, understanding of Islam is a bit diluted, as I mentioned before. We made mm -hmm. it as a ritualistic faith. You know, Christians go once a week uh, to the church. We pray five times a day. And that's mm -hmm. and then around it, we just do other things which may not align with Islam. Mm -hmm. So we made Islam as a ritualistic way. So we mm -hmm. need to correct our aqidah, right? Number one. Number two ways, we need to make sure that we uh, unite the Muslims. We have to unite the Muslims uh, around... Uh, you know, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. And that was uh, one of uh, the main goals of Salahuddin Ayyubi and the people around him. Mm -hmm. Not only they did what they did about Jerusalem and, uh, you know, uh, freed it, they also mm -hmm. united the Muslims around. Mm -hmm. So these are the three things I would say, right? Number one, mm -hmm. correcting our aqidah and making sure that we align our frame of reference should be the mm -hmm. Quran and the authentic Sunnah. Secondly, to unite the Muslims, sometimes we have to compromise, sometimes we have to let go of small differences for the bigger unity. And the mm -hmm. third important one is the, the strength of the Muslim Ummah, both mm -hmm. physical strength, spiritual strength, but you understand, right? The strength of the Muslim Ummah, what we were before. All of this is going to bring up the Muslim Ummah and with Allah's help, give us the success, inshallah. You mean Uqwa Islamia, doctor, yeah? Yes, and once Muslim Ummah is uh, strong, the rest of humanity would be strong. You know, when you look into Muslim Spain, Muslim mm -hmm. Damascus, Muslim Cairo, Muslim Kufa, Muslim, you know, uh, you know, Baghdad, all of these were lights of the world. When Muslim Ummah was strong, we were the one that pulled out, you know, uh, the Europeans from darkness, mm -hmm. physically from darkness, by the way, right? Spiritually, right. Too, morally too, from darkness. Muslim Ummah, when it was strong, we were the catalyst to the Renaissance. Mm. And when we are strong, that means, you know, all the moral de uh, uh, moral decades that we see, the social ills that we see, that we are all concerned about, inshallah, they will go away. Even the mm. non-Muslims are going to appreciate us. So for that reason, working and investing the resources, long time planning by mm. the masajis, by the activists, by the mm. da'is, by the mm. Muslim countries is so important. Correcting yeah. the khida, uniting the Muslims. And then obviously to make us physically and uh, you know brotherhood wise strong. Mm -hmm. Dr. Sabir Ahmed, because we are now approaching 45 minutes, I yes. would like to put you one last question. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Can you please advise us as an Indonesian audience to do dawah from the small, the smallest portion of dawah until the highest level of dawah like yourself? Can you please, uh, Doctor? Yes. First and foremost, advice would be. That, uh, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also used to advise his companions that it's important that every single person with whatever ability Allah has given to us, we should convey. Some people are good writers, some videographers, you know, good speakers, good uh, fundraisers. With whatever strengths that we have, we should use it, number one. Mm -hmm. Try to take out, you know, I mean, every person can take out some time uh, from their busy life. 
uh, try to spend maybe two hours to four hours every week to convey mm -hmm. the message. Mm -hmm. Number three would be conveying the message is not only about uh, what do you say, stepping out on the street and taking the mm -hmm. microphone. Nowadays, I would say that we can do all of that, but social mm -hmm. media is an excellent tool that we can use. Right. Like, just look at your channel, by the way, right? Mashallah, mm -hmm. it has uh, what millions of uh, what do you call it uh, views on your channel. Same thing with mm -hmm. mine. Mm -hmm. If we can do that, that means, you know, bigger massages, bigger organizations, you know, Muslim countries, every mm -hmm. single person should have a dynamic presence on the social media. Okay. Yeah. Number four important would be that uh, we need to make sure that we produce literature. We produce mm -hmm. contents and serious mm -hmm. contents. For example, mm -hmm. there can be a series of videos about Islamic solutions to the social ills regarding mm -hmm. gambling, homicides, suicide. You mean from who? What is that? You mean from this? Yeah, yeah, all of those, right? Because, you know, we just cannot run away from those things. Islam, uh, we need to like tackle it with the guidance Islam has given, correct? Mm. So we need to produce mm -hmm. contents. You know, we should have a monopoly on education, on contents the way that it mm. used to be. So content development is so important. We need many Dawa books, by the way. You know, way mm. back, Sheikh Ahmed Didad used to write those booklets and i used to order but there is a big drought in that yes videos mm -hmm. are important but reading is equally important right? Uh, right and for the children we need to strengthen their iman by showing that islam is not just a blind faith it's not ritualistic islam has mm -hmm. evidence this is the only right faith this is the only faith allah has given for humanity mm -hmm. and then lastly try to invest at least 30 to 40 percent of the resources in strengthening mm -hmm. our new muslim brothers and sisters giving you know integrating them empowering them you know become their ansar become their you know extended family yes. all of this inshallah is going to uh, make us a dynamic muslim ummah and may allah accept it from all of us ameen ameen mashallah thank you very much for your advices uh, dr sabil that's also some advices we already done Mashallah. but we also need more efforts to spread the dawah I apologize because my time already more than 45 minutes, but I hope you don't mind. Uh, I thank you very much for your time, uh, Dr. Sabir Ahmed, uh, because I know you are very busy every day. So I really look looking forward to do this again, uh, Dr. Sabir, uh, after, maybe after Ramadan, we can uh, spread the dawah uh, more, how to say, more global. Yeah, so uh, let me, uh, uh, I mean, send my best regard to you and your family and your team, Dr. Sabir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us, uh, grant his mercy upon all, all, all of us. Thank Amen. you so much, Dr. Sabir. Sure. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, brother.